Hello, dear friends and family of God. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. I have often heard Christians responding to the question when asked what religion they follow. Their responses in almost all instances have been the same. I do not follow a religion. I have a relationship with the Lord. It is not about a religion. It's about a relationship, they would say. You see, the response sounds good and right, yet my relationship with God is built on the premise that I do not merely desire it, but I pursue that relationship. It is about developing a deep understanding of who God is. It is also about responding to His mandate for my life and aligning my purpose to His word. And ultimately, it is about listening attentively to the Holy Spirit. I would like to share with you in two parts from the following passage of Scripture. Join me now as I read from Acts chapter 17, verses 24 and 25. Scripture says, The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and, ev and everything else. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. When calamity strikes us, we have the tendency to go into panic mode. The human response is often to assign blame to God for that which befall us. At the same time, our response to these challenges often denote that we think that God has lost the plot or lost control of the situation. In reality, we have lost it. But more than that, it reveals how little we know the creator of the universe. The Apostle Paul says, that God made the world and everything in it, and that He is the God of heaven and earth. In addition, He does not live in temples made with human hands. This is vital to realize in the time that we are living, that God does not live in temples made with human hands. He is not dependent on our opinion. Moreover, he is not served by human hands as if he needs anything. You know, this surely disqualifies the notion that God needs my permission for anything, as if he is on a remote or as if he is merely a supporting actor in my life. My friend, in the time that we are living, it is good to know our God. I am reminded of scripture in Habakkuk, 2 verse 14 when it says for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea what a blessed assurance that is that even now God's plan is operating in this world reflect on that for a moment the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. But you see, often we think that God's plan simply has to work out the way we have decided in our minds. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16 says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Oh, that is so powerful. It says, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Now I hear you when you say, but we are, we are only human. Friend, God challenges us today when Scripture says, we do not lose heart, even if outwardly we are wasting away. We could all sometimes want to ensure that the outer appearance look good. But even if it is wasting away, what matters most 
is what is happening on the inside. We are being renewed day by day. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Be of good courage. Philippians 1 verse 6 reminds us that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. But you see, being in a relationship with the Lord also hinges on the following in light of Philippians 3 verse 10 when it says, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Knowing him means participating in his suffering and becoming like him. If we are not prepared to share in his suffering and ultimately becoming like him, then any claim to a relationship with God is devoid of the truth. The question, however, that we need to answer is, do we know him? When last have you made time to listen to him? You see, it is vital to understand him because in the day of trouble, we will understand as articulated through Psalm 27 verse 5 when it says, For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. There can be no better place than knowing that right now, this is not merely a philosophical truth. It is a fact that in the time of trouble, he will keep me in the safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. How powerful, how marvelous is that? We are assured of his safety. We are assured of his provision and ultimately protection. Whatever you are facing right now, my friend, your God is able. Moreover, he is with you. I'm going to ask you to pray with me right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. There are so many who fear the terror by night and the arrow by day. But our hope, Lord, is in you. We thank you that you are God and we profess that we are your children. We ask that you would straighten that which is crooked and for your will to reign in our lives. Yet, Lord, though outwardly we are wasting away, we thank you that on the inside we are renewed day by day. Lord, We thank you for that and we give you praise and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.